for my real hip hop heads only. When chaos takes root as the norm and no voice can be found to lead the masses, some force, some idea, some person always comes in to fill the void. I remind you of this fact because in this sport we call hip hop, I believe I have witnessed on far too many occasions squandered potential and missed opportunities. The promise of this rapper or that rapper only to be swallowed whole by the pursuit of things which hold no value and allowing the opportunity for dominance to flutter away like a feather in a tornado. They are no more kings than the trinkets they covet, yet they have made them into gods. We of the solidified and certified real nigga brigade reject such frivolous pursuit in favor of ideals, principles, and art that strengthens the foundation of this most important art form ever unleashed on this planet. I speak again of hip hop. And to illustrate its importance, I have called upon the gentleman on the left side of your screen to show you what the fuck I'm talking about. The truth is in the timbre of his voice and the game is exemplified thoroughly through his speech. I'm saying his voice and his bars, different level than most. The combination of the two, 90% of these rappers cannot fuck with. You act unfamiliar with the level of his pedigree and ignore the threat he poses. Cut the games. You know who the fuck he is, and furthermore, you intimidated. Weak, feckless, no integrity, having protocol breaking, mediocre, rhyme spitting, fraud ass, running from real work, jock riding, rap ass niggas. As Rock Marciano said, you trying to fool the consumer, and you sicken me. I don't want Mickey Diamond to be my secret. The world should be aware of his immense gift, and any one of you who fail to recognize this have no business whatsoever breathing a word about this sport or partaking in its excesses. And this MC reps a squad that continues to earn the right to display unadulterated arrogance. I lead a small but mighty army that has stamped this man, and there is nothing that exists within your arsenal to impede the force that is his aura. If you're not following him, who the fuck you following? If you're not bumping him, then who the fuck is you bumping? If his bars don't make you want to step your game up, you delusional and think way too highly of yourself. It's me. I'm saying this. So without further ado, for the first time on the Mike Power Show and live as fuck from the collective known as Umbrella, Umbrella. the subtle threat that's set to morph into a full-blown calamity and the virus for which there is no vaccine. Ladies and gentlemen, the most honorable and dangerous Mickey Diamond is in the building. <laughs> Mickey. Yo, what the fuck, my nigga? Now that's how that's the intro, my nigga. Hey, you earned it. You earned it. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Damn, my nigga. Like, like word. Hey, we outside with it. I it's such an honor to have you on. You know, we have Pro Dillager on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Beast. That's my dog right there. Um, Brother, man. And I reviewed your album, Bangkok Dangerous 2. I didn't even know who you was. I'm on I YouTube, remember. flicking, it just pop up. I get stuck on it. I'm like, I'm doing a review on this joint ASAP. You know what I mean? The voice yeah. is so powerful. Let me just jump right in, man, before I start talking. Where are you from? From Detroit, bro. You from Detroit? West side. I'm, I'm, right, I'm, right, yeah, I'm from Detroit. I'm, I was raised on the west side, you know what oh. I'm saying? I'm gonna okay. ask you some questions that might be a little bit different than my normal interview, um, but this is for the people. I just want to ask you okay. this: Tell me about a loss that you took that you learned a life lesson from. I had I had my first kid, youngest child. Had my first kid when I was 17, and her mom wasn't from here. I met her mom here, but her mom was from Jersey. Long story short, um, midway through the pregnancy, she got homesick, moved back to Jersey, said she was gonna come back um, before we had the baby or whatever. So she never did, long story short. I used to go out there to Jersey and shit, visit my daughter. And um, there was a one particular summer where I finally got to have my daughter by myself for the first time. She let me have my daughter down here while she was back home. And I was supposed to have my daughter for the whole summer. And we got into an argument, bro, probably like the first week uh, that my daughter was here. And she 
came all the way down here, bro, with her grandma, bro, and took my motherfucking daughter from me. And it fucked me up, young as hell. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I got all these grown people around me and shit. I'll never forget the day that this shit happened, bro. It was summertime, it was sunny, everybody, my all my people's outside on the porch and shit. And everybody was just living their life, bro. Watching me go through this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I had to watch my daughter drive away. And that's just one of the many times, you know what I'm saying? But that shit taught me that some things you just have no control over. Well, I, I call you a walking movie. That, in my mind, that's that's what I call you, a walking movie. Um, it's how you present, right? What the fuck be going through your mind when you by yourself? Like, how do you view your art? <laughs> It's funny you say that, bro, because I actually got a project coming out this year that literally is premised somewhat of a movie. A lot of a lot of that shit goes to the like to what I watch. And to, you know what I mean? I'm a movie buff. I grew up on movies. I'm a video game nigga. I play hella video games. I had comic books when I was young, cartoons, being outside, fucking with different niggas that you see it's street niggas. And then you go to their crib and it's like, nigga, you got comic books? Like, nigga, you, you know what I'm saying? You was outside wilding all day. Like, certain, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was around niggas who made it okay that to, to, to fuck with shit without feeling like you was compromising your, your gangster. You get what I'm right. saying? I got you. I got you. But so, so, how are you going to release Bangkok Dangerous 3 and then a couple months later release Bangkok Adrenaline? What's, what, what you doing? That was a promo, bro. And that's the thing. See, that's the power of the internet, my nigga. So when I dropped Bangkok uh, 3, it came direct to vinyl. Nobody got to hear it. There was no digital. You didn't get to hear it un unless you purchased it, and then the vinyl came to you, and then you got it that way. All right. So for people who purchased it because they was going to have to do that wait, I did Bangkok Adrenaline in the process of doing BD3 so that if you bought that and you showed me proof that you bought that that day, I was giving you a free download of something that nobody else had that you can enjoy until... That was gonna hold you over for a couple of weeks to the to your vinyl land. Which one did I review? Bangkok Dangerous Two. You did BD Two. You did the so, second. Yeah. So it, I'm I'm and the people may not know this. Y'all can go check out that review on this channel. Bangkok Dangerous Two. I did the review for. I did not know who Mickey was, and everything happens for a reason because that dropped at a time where I felt like everybody was really caught up in doing the same thing, and then that album stuck out for me. You know what I mean? I Thank had to review it. It's a monster. Uh, I've been messing with you ever since. Um, yeah. um, the song Botch Robbery from Bangkok Dangerous 3 is scary different. Um, whose idea was it to be fearless and go to, with that old school doo-wop loop? Um, my wife. Shout out to Mallory Word. Notch, bro. She's the, you know, bro, she, she's the architect when it comes to the the thing creating the, the cinematic thing for a lot of my shit. And when I say that, I mean not not when it comes to the curating or and the order arranging, but she'll be around during the process while I'm picking all these beats from these different producers and shit. And when it's time for me to do my intro, my outro, or I need just that one joint for that for that feel, she already she are automatic and if you pay attention, she fuck with a lot of samples, like a lot of older samples and she and she flip them a lot a different way than the average person use them hold so, on man. wait a minute is your wife a producer yeah she Mallory Knox bro bro people keep telling this is the third time somebody <laughs> told me this and I yeah. keep on forgetting but listen because my gas is good like don't get it twisted that's why I forget my gas is is beautiful yo she crazy though yeah, yeah that's my that's my wife bro that's she, what's she, up she did Bosch Robbery. She did Bosch Robberies on there. She did Teflon Tactics on there. She did Top Fights on there. It's a song called Top Fights on there. And then she did the outro, the mask joint. I don't see need each you other anymore. on some. Y'all met each other on some music stuff or? Hell no, nah, man. We were we met each other working in a home improvement uh, company. I was working at a home improvement company in like 2011, duh, and uh, she was the finance manager there, and we got to kicking it on some outside of work shit. She ain't had nothing to do with music. That's why I said, bro, life is funny when you watch how old. That's why I said my steps was ordained. I was meant to be at that job, not to work that job. To fuck that job, it was to meet her. Hey, look, on the song Cam and Mace, you said, and I quote, if we were smart, we would have bought some stock in GameStop. My question is, what's your favorite old school console video game? 
Uh, my favorite old school console video game has to be Super Nintendo. And the reason being is because I didn't have one and all the fire guy had Sega. And anybody who knows what's what in real life know Nintendo graphics was way more fire than Sega. And unfortunately, like Sega had the fun shit, but yeah. Super Nintendo shit just looked better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. They used to have to go head up with niggas and you know what I'm saying? Oh, nigga, Sega better, Nintendo better, da da da. Whichever one you had, you was claiming was better. But in real life, niggas knew what was up. That Super Nintendo was that motherfucker. Let me ask you this: Is it is it tricking if you got it? Um, yeah, it is tricking if you got it because thank you, thank you. If, if you have to boss, if you have to purchase someone's affection, attention. Yeah. Or any of that sort, it's not real. They didn't fuck with you off the, what you really, you know what I mean? Like people be wanting to claim this loyalty shit, but it's not loyal if you had to buy it. You get Talk what I'm them. saying? Like, Talk to them. Hey. It's not loyal if you had to buy it because if it's not there or you didn't have it, you wouldn't have that. So it's Mom, not real. They be trying to say it ain't tricking if you got it. It's always tricking. It's always true, and, and, and you know, sometimes you got to pay to play. Uh, a nigga told me a long time ago why niggas trick because he, he was one of my best friends. God rest his soul, my nigga K. Um, he had a lot of money, bro, and so he used to be like, nigga, why? He, he used to be like, why? I got the easy pass. That's what he used to say when it come to business. He'd be like, nigga, y'all niggas waiting line six, seven months. Nigga, I got the easy pass because he going to pay her. You know what I'm saying? He got the bread. He going to take her out somewhere to eat. He going to toss a couple hundred dollars away. He already, he riding good. He going to yeah. jump the line. We ain't got the money like that. So we yeah. got to make the phone calls and good morning and all of that shit yeah. trying to hope. You feel me? So, I mean, my, I get my mouthpiece. Listen, the, the mouthpiece got to be vicious. I go, I, I'll never pay for nothing. It's all coming it's, out of here. It's coming out of here. If those who know, they know. Game recognize game. And I don't want no bum chick around me that don't recognize you know, my greatness. Fuck. I don't feel for enough. I don't feel for enough pretty in my life, bro, to know that at the end of the day, I, I'm only fucking with what's fucking with me. You get what I'm saying? I don't like if I like you, and, and you got and niggas gotta start thinking about that 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 way about themselves. Because if you like a girl, I don't give a fuck how much money you got. But what you got, if you like a girl and she don't like you, you can't have her. Listen, y'all better listen to Mickey Diamond. And this, this is straight out the D. 313 in the building, six mile, seven mile, eight mile, school craft, telegraph. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel I've, been me? there, I've been through there a few times. Playing with Joy Road, you know what I'm saying? Dexter Lynn Wolf, 12th Street, 14th Fall, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, All awesome, bro. Shout out shout, shout to Trick Trick, too, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, shout, shout, shout to homie Ferris, you know what I mean? Shout so. to my nigga Tom Ferris, that's my nigga. Yeah, real shit. That's my dog too. Um, what would a what would be a dope versus battle in your opinion? Um a dope versus battle, bro. A dope versus they won't do it. I would like to see Jay and Nas just for just for the sport, because it's not really no they 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 both too out of their element to give us what we really want to see from them. Right. With the right. bigger and spice that you, you know, what I mean, they, they, their shit would be more or less like a show, like when Red right. Man and uh, when Red and Meth did they verse. That shit was a concert. That shit wasn't a fucking verses. Right, and it was you one of the best concerts I've seen in a long time. One of my favorite verses that a lot of people didn't like, bro, was the Ray and Ghost, bro, because I liked how Ghost styled on that nigga Ray the whole. <laughs> he styled, Man, look, he yo, he was changing clothes and all kind of shit, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's my kind of shit. I like that kind of shit. Like they need to give Ghost another heads up with another nigga, bro, because he got he still got a catalog that was that he ain't even get to use just going against right. Ray. You feel what I'm right. saying? Let me ask you this: Did you hear that? Um, did you hear that May song where he just dissed Diddy? You supposed to teach Coach and P about a legacy. Instead, the niggas follow you. You teach them treachery. And now you saying you check for me without a check for me. Know what you talking about? This murder niggas double jeopardy. Niggas saying let it go. You bugging nigga. I can't let it be. Tell niggas don't call for me. I can only talk for me. I know what my budget read. I read the budget every week. I'm on a no way I talk, but it's a way out for me. They didn't try to dangle money. They didn't think I ever leave. Niggas never pay the artists, but they love to pay. Freaks. No, because I've been I've been done with Mace for a while, even though Mace <laughs> is, is a good rapper, bro. He, he just he I don't understand what he's doing and what he's been bro, doing. Like why you that was my pop- next question. My next question is what the fuck is Mace doing? So talk to he me. And he pop- Look, everything about that nigga since he ran off been about a cash grab. From the church shit to the popping back up with the welcome back shit when he was Mr. Rogers to the to the 
to you know what I mean he he popped one the uh the opportunity to beef with Cam any any way he still defended himself from shit that happened back in 1997-98 nigga it's 2022 like who you two you should be too rich to care at this point what the right. fuck Cameron saying about you or any of them niggas you get what I'm saying yeah like yeah. It, 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 you you an ordained minister. Why do you keep stooping to these niggas' level? These niggas is regular petty ass rich niggas. You an ordained minister, bro. You got money. You don't gotta respond to these niggas. You I gonna don't. The word, or you gonna you gonna pop back up on the track and be gangster? Which one is you, Mace? He, he, is you? you know what? He don't want to be either, bro. He just wanna. He just any opportunity to grab some money, bro. He gonna do it. Any opportunity to try to get his name back circulating because the reality of it is he never wanted to leave rap. He was scared. And he and, and because of the way he ran off, rap never let him back in because nigga, you scared me. You get what I'm saying? Like and I'm gassing and, niggas up. I bet Mace won't say nothing about Mickey Diamond. I bet he won't release a track on uh, Mace ain't got a thing about him, bro. <laughs> I shake Mace's head. That's what I said, bro. You couldn't get me to say nothing bad about a lot of these niggas, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about on our level and not right. because at the end of the day, you know, I know, I know the reality of this shit. Have the reality of this shit is. Niggas is regular niggas out here trying to eat. I don't give a fuck if you sell all the drugs that you say in your record. You still going home to your girl or hopefully or your kids and your wife. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you're just doing this shit for a purpose at this point. What did what, let's talk about the Will Smith smack at the Oscars? What was your take on that Will Smith smack? Talk to me about that. At, at, at first, at first I thought it was funny, but now that I see how everybody re reacting to it, I think it's uh, I think it's hella lame. And the way they overreacting about it is like nobody want to admit that the nigga is he feel emasculated at this point. And that's the bottom line, nigga. He feel emasculated because of his woman in public. He trying to do what he feel is right and, de and defend his woman at the same time. He shouldn't have done that because in my eyes, that bitch doesn't embarrass you enough, nigga. She kind of deserved that little gut punch right there up on stage. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> and he laughed about the shit at first if you paid attention. And then when he saw that she didn't think that shit, because she laughed too. And then yeah. she rolled her out and he took yeah. that shit offensive and went up there and did what he had to do. But I think a nigga like Will Smith don't give a fuck about no Academy Award. That shit. He probably you know what I mean? Like, like, look, like, you ain't look, Corey Holcomb didn't did a show and went in on him. You know what I mean? On his podcast. He's not gonna smack Corey Holcomb. No, but at the same time, Chris Rock ain't a funny nigga. See, Corey Holcomb would have said the shit in the way it's where it'd have been like, nigga, come up here and smack me if you want to. What about you know what I'm saying? You about to do this in your house, giving it to your wife. Why you ain't smack him? You gonna smack because he got, Chris but, Rock? Because they gotta. I don't even think that shit is about that no more. I don't even think that shit is about the August I've seen this shit no more. Personally, I think it's just him now, bro. Like he been going through a lot. Look, think about Will Smith's career, right? And, and Will Smith's his name. The nigga squeaky clean. The nigga, I, even when niggas were saying, "Oh, Will Smith gay," uh, he sleep. So what? At the end of the day, that's Will Smith. He ain't he ain't got no fuck the record. The nigga can go anywhere in the world. Everybody love him. Men, men and women alike. He's a beloved. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere, right? Yeah. And then the nigga get with Jada Pickett Smith had these, unfortunately had these weird ass rich kids and Will Smith been dealing with the backfire, the backlash of his whole family. You get what I'm saying? Ever since. That boy ain't no alpha. His kids wilding out, his wife wilding out. He ain't yeah, but nothing about He is an alpha, bro, because in order to do the shit that he do, in order to do the shit Will Smith do, bro, he can't be there. <laughs> You can't make eighty million dollars, bro. A, a film, bro, and X, Y, Z, and not even just that, bro. You gotta think. He's sustaining they live, they they livelihood too, even though they got their own money. Probably. As soon as I see my son on TV acting, well, I'll be like, bro. Next time I see you, I'm putting my foot in your ass. Like that's where I'm at with it. You know what I mean? Like at a certain yeah, point, you gotta you control what's going on. Rich, bro, that's what I'm saying. Will Smith do something to fucking one of his kids? Right now, he checked them or he disciplined them like a regular kid, like a regular person would, bro. He going to jail. Well, you can't be an alpha if you don't have control. New. If you don't have control over that space that you occupy where you're paying all the bills, you can't be an alpha. If I could walk in your house and get at your wife, you not an alpha. How long you had that voice? Um, Probably like the past like four or five years. What? Also, <laughs> like, like I just woke up like. As I got older, I don't know, bro. Maybe a couple smoking cigarettes or something. But I just woke up one day, bro, and just my voice just got deep. Like, about to say this nigga went through puberty at twenty nine years old. Wow. <laughs> no, bro, just real shit though. I just, I just woke up one day and my shit. It's like my voice always been my voice, but it was way lighter. Do you have any real friends in this game? Uh, yeah, I actually would say I do. Besides I, I your got crew. A, I got a, I, 
You said what happened? The besides your crew. Yeah, yeah. I okay. will say I do. Yeah. Okay. I, absolutely. Um, one 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 piece of advice that I give motherfuckers that that works for me is when you a genuine non standoffish type nigga with no ego. You can have ego, but it can't be against other people. You gotta right. have ego with yourself. You get what I'm saying? Right. If you telling yourself, if you telling yourself you the best, that's cool. But you can't go in no other nigga inbox like, yo, what's up? You, you need to work with me. I'm the best. I've been talking to this nigga pro every day for like the past two years. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. You know what I'm saying? We talk business. We talk rap. We talk personal shit that's going. We keep each other kind of afloat. What was the best album to drop last year besides from your crew? Best album that dropped last year besides from my crew. I'm going to have to say Mav, Mav Breakfast at Sue's. Ooh! Um... Oh, I liked Hitler. I liked it, the Hitler eight. I liked it, the Hitler eight. And I liked the uh, B side joints too. Cause there was a couple joints that dropped last year that was real, real fire, bro. I know. Uh, I, I know. Bo Bodie dropped a couple, right? Yeah, but but I don't remember his. Oh, you talking about that price of tea in China? Was that last year? The shit that had the Benny, the, the single with Benny on it, right? It's all bleeding all together because niggas dropped so much shit. So it might have been, I thought that was 2020. It might have been 2021 where he dropped the price of tea in China. That, look, everything. Super Tecmo, Super Tecmo Bo? You heard oh, that joint? Oh, Super Tecmo Bo. I, yeah, I wasn't, I mean, I ain't gonna say I wasn't really a big fan of it like that because I ain't really finished it. But the couple songs I really heard, I, I don't know. I don't like what. I don't like when Bodie rap on them super slow ass beats. He he might have been out longer than I known about, but I rem the first time I heard Bodie was the song One of One. It's Bo Blizzles posted on that nickels, talking that Bo nickel with my homie Jay Pizzle on the boards making sizzle. Blew out the van, ten bins, not a roller decks rolling off a skittle. You can taste the rainbow, but don't get offended when your bitches run up on me like Bodie, you that nigga, and all of them bad, asking for autographs. Some want them on their ass. Some on them on titties. But I, I just feel like you hear the D come out, pause, in his voice. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I'm always... Okay, look, can, uh, what's the first thing you buy if you had Jeff Bezos type money? If I had Jeff Bezos money, I'd just do like free housing for people and shit, bro. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, just free of charge. Like, I write that shit off of my taxes every year and just keep keep that going. Like, aside from my whole other business, because that nigga got billions, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. you got enough money to snap your fingers like Thanos and change the lives of half of America or half of a small, or you could be fixing small countries all across the world or doing something real with your money than just flying motherfuckers out to space. Can you explain NFTs to me? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. hey, but I know, I know it's there for non-fungible token. Right, and basically that, what it is, is this. If you create a piece of art and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it could be a digital, it could be a picture, it could be a drawing or anything, right? If this is the original, it, they take it, they get it, they get it minted. And then I guess that the minting of that is cementing that one official thing. And anytime that thing gets sold or reproduced, the original owner of that shit gets a percentage off of it. However, I still don't understand that shit. Even it's when a fucking being digital like, toilet. You, know what I'm saying? you gonna buy an NFT, then you gonna show it to people to say, "Lo, yo, I, I got this NFT," and then I'm gonna screenshot this shit. Now I can look at it whatever the fuck I want, and you pay for it. It's the dumbest shit. It's the dumbest shit in the world, bro. Or some one hundred smartest. But it's it's smart. But well, see, here go my whole thing. I don't. I'm not. I don't believe in this cryptocurrency shit yet. I was going to ask what I'm you. Saying? you I'm know, still, can I you know. explain? Can you explain Bitcoin? That's what I was going to ask you that next. Um. Yeah. Bitcoin is if you were smart, you and you in two thousand and fucking four and five, then then you rich now. But if you wasn't. And you ain't got no real paper to buy that shit. So ass ass it's, it's quiet over. for you. You niggas. get what I'm saying? So that's just quiet. You know, that's one of them things that people. I remember when that shit first happened, bro. Niggas was like, "Oh, uh, I remember watching like, like you getting too far away from your router." Ah! What's popping? Benzino, can you explain Benzino? He seemed like he him, dog. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I watch certain interviews from him, and I don't know the issue. I don't got a full understanding of the issue. He sound like he got the he 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 right and then sometimes he just be sounding like a bitter nigga. Can you explain to me the difference between you and most other rappers? Yeah. Um difference between me and most other rappers is I'm not scared to do something different. I'm not scared to try and fail. I'm not scared to reach out 
I don't have an ego that's going to not allow you to speak to me. Let me ask you this. What's better, forgiveness or revenge? Oh, um, forgiveness, forgiveness is better because it's merciful. And that's what we all wish for. Uh, and you wish everybody was. And if, they, and if people had that in them, the world would be a better place. But unfortunately, uh, the lack of mercy creates vengeful people. So the average energy you probably get is, is revenge because people won't like nothing more than to get back. But, you know, forgiving somebody is like it's like having a fucking 50 pound weight strapped to your to your shoulder that you can get off because you can get over the situation and really move on, whether it's a, a relationship with your girl or relationship, a childhood issue. A lot of people get hung up on traumas and use them shit as excuses to do bullshit as they get older and they ruin them. They're burning bridges and ruining their life in the process. And then when they're old enough to figure it out, it's too late because all the people you really change for ain't around to see it. What's the best album you ever heard come out of California? Oh, shit. Gotta be Doggy Style, The Chronic, The Chronic 2001, or The Documentary. But then again, I gotta say Charlie Hustle from E-40. Um, fuck. Uh, Planet Asia and uh, Apollo Brown album. It's Oh, anchovies? Oh man. my God, that album, man! Come it's on, we started, Mark bro. Ford too. Oxnard, California yeah. is in the building. Mark Ford, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mark Ford, uh, he dropping some shit. Um, yeah. Um, uh, my nigga, Supreme Cerebral, Body Bag Ben, like Ooh, Body Bag um, Ben. Wally Clark, shout to Supreme Cerebral. I'm gonna tell you a joint that I really, really enjoyed last year. Um, the Wally, they dropped a joint called Wally Connoisseur. Him and Elo Kush over Clipto Production. Shout out to my nigga Clipto oh, too. Man. I don't think I heard that yet. Let's do. Let man. me ask you this: Can we agree that Kevin Hart just ain't that funny? Uh, I think it depends on what he playing in. I think he got the flexibility. You know how you got certain mild white independent film comedies where they don't they don't, they're not trying to aim for like the funny funny, but they need they need that black dude in there. He got a smile, bro, that makes you smile. Okay, so, so here's here's his range, right? He is a rangy fucking actor. He go all the way on one end of the spectrum from little scared ass black dude to really scared ass black dude. That's his range. <laughs> all he do is do scared little. Nah, he wasn't nigga. like that. He wasn't like that on, on on the upside. I didn't see that. I can't watch Kevin Hart movies. I can't. The movie, the the, the movie where he was pushing around. Um, uh, what's his name? Pushing around the old white dude. The old white dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. He wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying. You know what, bro? The thing people gotta realize is that being typecast is not a bad thing when the pay is there. Cause people get typecast in good ways and bad ways. Listen, I'm not gonna knock him. Get get the bag. Cause you can typecast me right now. I need a bag right now. I'm Look. gonna tell you one of the one of the worst acting transitions in my life. That I, that I did not like. And that was them turning Denzel Washington into, a, into an action star. I, I, I didn't really did like them. Like them um, what's the, the 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 one movies he's been doing like lately? The, the, where he the one nigga. He likes the hitman nigga. You the know what I'm talking about? The equalizer? The equalizer. Yeah, I mean, them shit's all right, but I, you Listen, know what I'm saying? Right now, Mickey, yeah. Di you, Mickey Diamond, you breaking rules. There's the rules on this set. We never talk bad about Denzel Washington. <laughs> My nigga. I didn't say I didn't say I don't like his acting. I said yeah. I didn't like how he transitioned into a fucking action. You know what I'm saying? He had that joint with him and Mark Wahlberg with two guns, with that two guns up. You know what I'm saying? Just they just they that you was, know what I mean? He was a playing good movie, like though. I but the, what I'm saying is but this is a pristine actor. It's like you know what yeah. I'm saying? Denzel was never a comedian in the first place to even be kind of fucking or an action nigga. He the nigga you go to for the the most action we ever saw Denzel in was like Glory and fucking uh and uh training day, you know what I'm saying? All his movie roles uh, up until like he started like the mid 90s, we started doing like deja vu and man on fire, and those shits was good. You get what I'm saying? Those were good, John but they Q weren't the like, shit. And but that wasn't an action movie, that was some like that's what I'm saying. That's a Denzel role, that's yeah, a you're real, right. you right, you feel me? And so, I, I didn't like this transition into action. So let's do, word, let's do word association. I'm going I'm to I'm throw a name out there and you just kind of give me one or two words, not a whole thing. Just one or two gotcha. words. Um, West Side Gun. Legend, innovator. Okay. Lil Nas X. Innovator, controversial. Sade. 
legend, baby maker. <laughs> Akon. Legend. Financially smart. Captain Crunch. Hurt the roof of your gums. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that shit like eating cardboard. You better, you better let that shit sit in the milk for two hours, boy. Yeah, that's like eating cardboard with milk, my nigga. You might as well eat a fucking bowl. Of, remember the Jacks? Remember the Jacks? Because used to play with when they was kids. The little bubble, the little spike he said, shit. He said it's like yeah. eating a bag of Jacks. Yeah, that's like eating a bag of Jacks, nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, where's Khalifa? Innovator himself. Okay, Joe Budden. Innovator, sucker shit. Ooh, thirty-eight special. Innovator, underground, underground genius. When okay. you think about also, pun, also the punchline king. I think I called him. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Pro Dillinger, determine the next wave of that grimy shit. Snotty. Coke rap in human form storytelling. T D Jakes. Ah, that's a good one. Um <laughs> uh, False Prophet. <laughs> Larry June. Hey, hey, hey. Very that that that's what that's what I say about Larry Joe. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, that dude. I'm good job. Good good job. Yeah. Pimp C. Legend. Mm. Uh ahead of his time. Mm. Rest in peace, Pimp. Um so I love the song Keep the Lights On. Um, umbrella, tell me who the fuck do it better. Tommy Hill sweaters when it's Johnny Gill weather. Let the rain pour, call tsunami waves when I brainstorm. Versace frames, right in flame while the game on. Pierre caught in, I beg your pardon. No chatter for lanes. Jackson Pollock paint splatter your brain. Need I say more? Shut shit down like government layoffs. Hustle because I know where to pay off. Uh, first of all, what type of pressure is it to be on a track with Pro when he's spazzing like that? Uh, I ain't scared of that nigga, man. I don't know. I did like I listen to Pro get on records with other niggas. <laughs> I listen to Pro get on records with other niggas though. He can violate niggas though. But it's just like I don't know. I don't I just sparred with this nigga. I done rapped alongside this nigga so many times, dog, that I don't know. He don't scare man, me. Listen, man, first of all, y'all so polished. I appreciate y'all for being I appreciate y'all for being so street, so grimy with it, but you're polished. Like your voice. It's like, remember when, when THX sound first came out and it would be at that beginning yeah. of every movie? It would make that yeah. sound. And, you, and you'd be like, yo, this is about to be some beautiful sound. When I hear your voice go yeah. on, when I get, when you when you start to get into it, I'm like, man, this dude voice, man, and then pro? Y'all got some voices on that squad, my nigga. I appreciate you, bro. And again, all, not by design, bro. You know, we just, it just happened that way. But I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Um. Uh. Secondly, what type of gun is that on the artwork for "Keep the Lights On"? You are you picking cats off from distance? Matter of fact, you know what? Don't answer none of that. We're not gonna answer any of that. <laughs> Don't give me no answer <laughs> at all. <laughs> Look, what's the weird? What's the weirdest thing that ever happened in your DMs? Um, uh, a nigga hit me from a burner account. I asked me to do a song for his son's birthday. And he told me he would pay me to do a short video of me spitting the song for his son's birthday. for, And, I, and the check was for, uh, I think, like 2,000 bucks or whatever. So the nigga basically hit me with a bad check. And so when I when I hit the nigga, I hit the nigga back and was like, yo, he hit me like, uh, yo, uh, you cash it. So I'm going to tell you what the scam was, was supposed to be. He was gonna send me a check for um for I think three thousand dollars, but my the what I was supposed to do it for was gonna be for like eight hundred or something shit like that. And I was gonna send him back the remaining 
so that we couldn't, so that he didn't have to do, you know what I mean? It was a whole lab. He had it real, it sounded real good at first, bro. And yeah. I fell for it. I ain't gonna even hold you. Uh, so I hit the nigga like, yo, what the fuck? I got arrested for the fucking check and just that and the third, you know what I'm saying? And the nigga just stopped responding to me. So that's how I figured out that it was, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really get arrested in none of that shit for that shit, but, you no. know. Yeah, it's not like a Nigerian scam. And I had a I had an African dude hit me up on an artwork when I first got on IG. Cause I mean, if you brand new on IG, that's how they hit you. Cause you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, it was on IG. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you brand new on IG, they like, yo, I got this artwork. I was like, yo, I get, I, I only paid this nigga like forty fucking bucks, but that nigga gave me some clip art, some crazy shit. I said, nigga, he, I can see by the way he was typing, he was from Africa. I'm like, nigga, I will come to Africa and beat your ass. Crayola doodle. He got your ass a Crayola doodle. Like. Yeah, I said, send my money back. Then he did send my money back too. I really told him I was going to expose him on IG. That made him give me. I tell everybody right now, nigga, you a fraud. So give me my money. Yeah, like, nigga, stop fucking with you, nigga. That's yeah. that shit's real. Niggas don't understand that, bro. The power of a post, nigga. Yeah. So your whole trajectory. Um, could you get busy with a gorgeous woman if her mouth smell like donkey feet? Uh, couldn't do it. Because I like to kiss. I ain't going to even hold you. You know what okay. I'm saying? I'm no kid, matter how beautiful nigga. she is. Nah, I mean, shit, she, is it like on a permanent type of time or is it like... Yeah, I mean, just let's, let's, just, let's just say she got a problem. She can't really get rid of the shit. I uh, like some prop, uh, permanent halitosis. Yeah, nah, that ain't for me. I can't even Booty hold popping. Uh, yeah, nah, it ain't for me. It ain't for me. Tits popping. She cook good. Love you. Loyal. Smart. I rather but the have, mouth I rather smell have like dumpster juice. I would rather have a chick that don't look nowhere near as good, but her breath don't ever stink. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's, right. That's right. me. I, I That's agree. Me. Um, do you trust a flushable wipe? I don't. I, they say they're disposable, but no. I feel like them shits all to do the same thing. Get clogged in your fucking what you call it after a while. I just, I just cop some. They working out good for me for the past two weeks. Believe me. Um, <laughs> at what age are, are at what age are men too old to have their whole ass hanging out their pants? Oh shit. Uh, I'm gonna say now as a grown up, I'm gonna say fucking 16, 17. After you, after the age of 16, 17, if your ass still hanging out when you're walking around the fucking streets and niggas can see your whole drugs and all that shit, bro. I mean, you know, to each his own. I understand that the certain, because in certain places of the world, bro, it's a fashion look. You know, these niggas buy their t shirts skinny and small just so they underwear, so you can see they got the etiquette drawers or whatever. You know, everybody playing into whatever the fuck they try and project to whoever they try and reach. But I'm just trying to figure out if these niggas know what pants are for. Like, I it's mean, meant to you cover know, your ass. You got, you got to think, bro. Niggas was buying designer belts and still sagging them. Niggas buy designer belts and still sag their pants in them. Man, it's a clip out there on the internet where a, dude, where a dude had Gucci everything on. I, 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 I need to find the clip. He had Gucci everything on the belt. He had bag, everything. And his pants was around. He took a whooping in, like, this little ass fucking soul food spot. And of course, <laughs> he couldn't do nothing because he 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 handcuffed his own thighs. He only got the yeah. movement because he, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, listen, yeah. um, who's the voice of hip hop? Uh, depends on what era you're talking about, but that's, I'm, I'm gonna have to say Jay or Kanye. I'm okay. gonna have to say them too. The right. correct answer is Mike Powers Global. I am the voice of hip hop. <laughs> that's a fact. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You ain't seen my video from Syracuse, I see. You know what I mean? <laughs> I went to Syracuse. I asked everybody. Ito, Bentley, oh, uh, uh, Lucky Caesar, uh, Jay Black. Shout to Jay Black. Black G. Yeah. Shout to all them cats. Uh, my man Jay. Yeah, I asked him. I said, who's the voice of hip-hop? None, none of them could give me the right answer, but it's Mike Powers Global. Mike Powers. All right, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Know. Hey. Mickey Diamond is my honor and my pleasure to finally get you on the platform. The oh, umbrella man, is important. Back. My nigga, my nigga, y'all taking over. Y'all next. I you know what I mean? it, bro. I'm happy to have you at this stage in your fucking career. And I know this ain't going to be the last time we have you. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, bro. And I want to tell you also on behalf of me and my squad, bro, we see what you're doing. Continue what you're doing. I'm, I'm enjoying the rise. Like, you know, y'all, like, I'm sure y'all enjoying ours, bro. Yes. And we're yes. going to meet the top, nigga. And when we get there, we're going to look back down and see, remember where we came from, bro. So, first to many, my nigga. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you so much.